And a very good afternoon and welcome to the Daily Punt Saturday TV preview. As always with myself, David Massey, it's uh, Friday afternoon. Going to go through the seven races on the uh, on the card at four at Cheltenham, three at Doncaster. Um, really good days racing. Um, it looks like being the um, ground at Cheltenham is soft at the moment. There's the odd good to soft patch, but I think the rain is coming in the morning. It looks like um, we're going to be looking at around about, um, around about another sort of three to four mil, and that's just going to keep it well on the soft side. It's going to be testing ground tomorrow. You need something that gets home. First race on the Cheltenham TB card tomorrow, anyway, is the 150, the Crest Nicholson Handicap Chase. Uh, good races over just over two and a half miles, grade three contest. Um, one or two have defected from the the previous contest, the Timeform Novices into here, the likes of uh, Q-Style Civilla and Bally Hill, both going to be taking their chances in this race. And you can't blame them, to be honest. This this race is worth considerably more. So, you know, why take your chance in the, the previous race when this is a very similar contest? And it will suit both of those two down to the ground. You've got to start, really, with Q-Style Civilla, I suppose, who's always looked like there's a, a good handicap in him this season. He's taken on some decent sorts. His jumping stands him in good stead. It's been, it's been pretty good on the last couple of occasions um trip ground absolutely ideal might be taken on for the lead does like to be prominent shall we say doesn't have to lead but certainly likes to be prominent there's there's a few prominent runners tomorrow that's probably about the only question mark i've got with kustar civil in terms of you know where he is in the handicap because the handicap is not touching these horses when they're finishing second third in these bigger races these bigger novices chases um at, on the level weights anyway he's probably about some at least seven or eight pounds in front of his mark so he's undoubtedly the one to beat uh, the cat's rather out the bag now with Bally Hill I'm afraid I sort of marked him down early season as possibly one for the grand annual come the festival after his second to so royal at Warwick where he jumped really well um, and his jumping again last time was really good when they stepped him up to this trip uh, in in bad ground so he's got plenty of plus points the negative point for me with Bally Hill, as it is throughout the afternoon with um, with his runners, is the form of the Twist and Davy Shard. Just gone a little bit quiet now after a good spell through much of December. The only winner that they've had in the last couple of weeks was the new one. And it's not just a case of them not having winners. A lot of the horses that are well fancied are, are running somewhere below their marks. So it's a concern to me now. It'll be interesting to see how Bally Hill goes here. If Bally Hill goes well, it might bode well for the rest of the afternoon for his runners. But equally, if you know if Bally Hill just doesn't put it in, then you know it, it's going to be a worry. Um, two at bigger prices for me. Bally Longford's worth a second look, I think, but a, a, a whopping price. Um, I'd be tempted to give Potter's Legend a try. He can belt a fence or two, which is going to be a bit of a worry. He needs to clear around. But his form at Cheltenham's pretty good. Um, he's been in the frame all three times that he's run here and of course if you go back to his bumper days he was only a length behind uh, behind Bally Andy in a, in a bumper here but I think he's a chance Potter's legend he was second on the I think he was second on this day last year um, in the time form novices the previous race he's better known as uh, a stayer these days but you know emphasis is going to be on stamina tomorrow if he can put a clear round in I think 25 to 1 is a bit of a big price. So he'll do for me, I think, a little bit each way on Potter's Legend at around about 25 to 1 in the hope that he puts a clear round in. Uh, then we move on to the Cotswold 225. Um, covered this off earlier in the week. Um, sadly, haven't quite got the value I was hoping to get with Perfect Candid. I thought one or two more of these might drop out and we'd end up with about six runners. Um, we've got the dead eight for each way purposes, at present anyway. Um, I made the case for perfect candidate in the week at a big price. I don't think he can win, in truth. He isn't really this grade. Um, but what he has got is conditions in his favour tomorrow. Uh, Cheltenham is his, his track, really. And he won't mind the bad ground either. If Paddy Brennan is positive on him from the word go and you know and gets him jumping alongside American. Um, I know American's a really lovely horse out in front and it could be tomorrow that American turns his season around as well. Uh, it's that sort of a race. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful Perfect Candidate can, can run a decent race and maybe we can get in the three. As, as I said, there's a few that you've got question marks against here, notably T for two, who I don't think 
really acts that well on the track. Um, single farm payment looks a little bit outclassed to me. I could see the last Samurai going well, but as I said, I'm happy to let the last Samurai, you know, win this. If the last Samurai wins, and Bristol Demai is well beaten off, um, at that point, surely, you know, as we've said before, Nigel starts looking at Black Lion, who put the last Samurai in his place at Aintree, as a genuine Gold Cup contender. Surely the form all sort of then points towards him a little bit. Um, Bristol Demai has to sort of turn it around a little bit after a poor effort in the King George. The ground here will be fine for him. Does he act on the track? Jury's out after the one effort last year. I don't know. Um, but again, the Twist and Davis factor comes into it again. How are these horses running? Need to have a look at the early ones tomorrow before you make a decision. Um, I really like Definitely Red as a project this season. There is a huge race in him. It looks like they now might be sort of leaning back towards the Grand National after Brian Allison saying that the the bowl at Aintree might be his target this season. He's, but there is there is a big race in Definitely Red. Is it tomorrow? Again, I'm not sure about the track. A couple of efforts here have left plenty to be desired. He might just be happier on flat tracks. So, as I say, this question marks about a few. I'm hopeful that with a positive ride we can get perfect candidate in the frame, but I don't think he can win. I think the winner is more likely to be either American or the last Samurai. Ballymore Classic, Novice Sirdal follows next, um, two and a half miles. No shortage of pace on here. There's going to be plenty of these pushing on early, and this could turn into a right, a right slog fest. Uh, the one I liked, I'm a little bit disappointed with the price. Um, Pacific de Bone, who I saw win at Newbury, uh, beat Potterman easily that day. Um, really did look like a horse that wanted to step up in trip as well. Travelled so well throughout that contest and once asked to put the race to bed, found loads. Um, that form leaves him with a bit to find with one or two of these. So I was sort of, I was rather hoping for around about sort of five to one, eleven to two, um, then I would have chanced a little bet. But at around about seven to two, that's short enough. The bookmaker's already factored in the improvement to come with both Pacific to Bone and to a lesser extent Santini as well. And they, you can argue this, this value in, in the likes of Slate House at around about eight, nine to one, who's, who's hang on, it wasn't a great run last time, but the previous form when he beat Somerville, boy, you know, that stands up really well now. So you, you can argue there's a case that one or two of these that have got the form in the book, are uh, probably a little bit bigger price than they should be. Um, Tick and Bar as well was impressive last time in making all. Um, Mulcahy's Hill I'm not sure about I don't know what to make of that Newbury form it just looks a little bit it was a huge step up on anything he'd done before it just rings like it's not quite true to me um, I'm happy to be proved wrong but he will get taken on for the lead tomorrow as I say there's there's plenty up front here in terms of pace um, Pacific de Bone for me but at the price um, I would, I'd want to see him just drift a little bit I think tomorrow morning um, on to the Cleve Hurdle um I think it goes without saying that there isn't going to be a dry eye in the house if beer goggles wins tomorrow, given the dreadful events of this week. And uh, your heart really does go out to the Wallacotts and all their friends and family and associates. Um, some, you know, what can you say? It, it really is a dreadful state of affairs. And if there's if there's any good to come out of this, let's hope that we start talking about these sort of issues in racing and not sweep them under the carpet. That's all I'll say on the subject. Um, Probably goes from the front tomorrow, Bay Goggles, um, along with Agripart. I think they're likely to set the pace. and They don't want to be cutting each other up too early, or they are going to set it up for some others. Um, very interesting race. There are two or three here at, at bigger prices that I do quite like. I want to take Finian's Oscar on as well. You, I've known all season that I'm not, those of you that follow me, I'm not a massive Finian's Oscar fan, I have to say, I, um, after he won the first time out this season. Maybe going back over hurdles is, is the key with him. I'm... And it, it maybe maybe tomorrow he turns his season around, but I'm not I'm not I certainly won't be taking three at one. Thomas Campbell, interesting, stuck to the task last time. Um, I was noted after the last running on quite nicely at Ascot. I was uh, I was quite taken with him, and he might just be a Cheltenham horse, Thomas Campbell. So back on ground that we know he goes on tomorrow, and he will get the run of the race. I won't be at all surprised if Thomas Campbell gets involved tomorrow. Similarly, um, I'm a big fan of the World's End as well. I know Tom Joy thinks an awful lot of this horse. Um, might just take a couple of runs to get to peak fitness. Did take a run last season, and it may just be that he's, he's now approaching peak fitness at just the right time as well. Um, and Colin's sister, you know, again, I'd love to see Colin's sister on well. She's a horse I followed 
um, ever since her early career really and she's done little wrong you can give her a chance of reverting the Holstone form I mean she'd already beaten Holstone at Weatherby and she gets a bit more weight off Holstone tomorrow than she did last time so she's got chances as well um, it, it's a bit more open than I think the market makes it I think some of these I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of these get bet in tomorrow um, at present I'm looking at sort of splitting the stakes between Thomas Campbell and the World's End, I think, in, as I say, what is uh, a, an open-looking race. Um, we'll go over to Doncaster, there's three races over there as well. The first one, the Albert Bartlett River Dom, um, Novice of Sirdle. <clears throat> in terms of having a bet, I've got no interest really in having a bet in this. I think it's quite a, a tough contest. Um, if there is a case to be argued for something that's overpriced, it's probably Samuel Jackson who's done absolutely nothing wrong in two runs, one at 100 to one, and everybody thought it was a fluke, it wasn't, came out at banger next time, one again, and the form's been franked since. Um, it doesn't have that much to find here to get involved with the, the likes of Indian Hawk, I don't think, and you can argue that he's a bit overpriced, but it's a wide open contest, not one that, from a betting perspective, I'm particularly interested in. The mayor's hurdle that follows though at 240, um, this is going to be run at a million miles an hour, isn't it? Dame Rose, Mariah's Benefit, probably both going to go from the front. The Nipper's probably not going to be far away either. Um, I'm tempted, if, if it goes to double figures, may, might take a chance on Irish Row, who likes it here at Doncaster. It's only handicap form that she's so, she, she has shown so far, but her bumper efforts suggest that she's probably capable of getting involved at this level. And she will get this run to suit. Ground should be absolutely fine for her. Um, and if Henry Brook can just sort of sit and be patient on her while they get on with it up front, I think she's got a chance of getting involved late on here and she might have a bit too much toe for these. Um, 10 to 1 could be a big price in a race, as I say, where you know that it could end up a little bit of a could end up a little bit of a, a battlefield up front. There's a case to be there's a case to be argued for smart talk at a stupid price. It seems to have been written off completely on the back of one bad run and a bit of a break. Um, if you go back to her novice form, she looked really smart, I thought. And, you know, I, I, I get that this is probably a stepping stone towards, you know, big, bigger targets in the spring. But even so, um, 33s is a big price if she's fit tomorrow. Um, but I'll take a chance with, um, with Irish Row in that one. And then we move on to the Sky Bet, Handicap Chase. Um, it was suggested to me last night that Lammy Surge only has to turn up to win this. At the time, I was sort of scoffing um, about that. But the more you look at it, <laughs> the more you just think it's Lammy Surge's really to lose. And, you know, there's even a case to be argued that 3 to 1 is too big off this mark. Um, he could probably take half these fences home and still beat most of these. There are. It would be wrong to say they're not a great bunch. That would be, would be the wrong thing to say. But a few of these have got you know, bits and pieces to prove now. A lot look handicapped to the hilt. Um, some of them are a little bit in and out. You don't know how they're going to go tomorrow. If there is a danger, I think it's Longhouse Hall, who's been entered up for various contests, big contests over the winter. Um, and there's probably still a little bit more to come, I think, with Longhouse Hall. I'm not worried about the fact that he's been off for a while. Um, he ran really well in the Coral Cup last year off a break. So the fact that he's, he keeps getting entered up suggests that he's fitting well, that they've had him ready for a while. The key to him is that he has to have good ground. So again, I think the key will be if the ground keeps drying out, and it is doing, there's not much rain, if any, forecast for Doncaster tomorrow, then he could be um, the main danger, I think, off that mark. But Lammy Surge, as long as he, you know, he, David Russell will just sit and wait, presumably, till the last possible minute, for going on Lammy Surge, but it does rather, you have to say, look, um, a bit of a plot, and it does look his to lose. So there we go, that's tomorrow. Um, what's my best bet out of all of those? Well, I think I'm gonna, as I say, I think that, um, I'm, <laughs> I think I'm quite I'm quite interested in that Cleve hurdle tomorrow in taking two small bets with the World's End and Thomas Campbell. And of the two, I do prefer Thomas Campbell, I think. Um, I, I think he's just gonna get the run of the race tomorrow and uh, it'll take another step forward, that's my hope. So best of luck with all your bets today then guys, we'll be back next week, thank you very much.